What's your name? Jordan. 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 So I was wondering about the flood, because what I've heard from both like science textbooks is yeah. that there is a lot of localized flooding, but then different religions, there's always that idea of like there was a big flood before mm -hmm. and it's always showed up. So I was wondering which one was more plausible. That's a great question. Um, and again, this I do believe uh, has two different possible Christian explanations. Um, in fact, I was just having a conversation with a friend of mine a few weeks back, and uh, we were talking about some of these apologetic issues and how do you explain stuff, and he goes, Psh, I can't believe it, those people who, who think that there was just a localized flood, that's just the most ridiculous thing I've ever thought. And the whole time thinking, I'm like, I know some really strong Christians who do believe in localized flood. Um, and I, I personally do think that you can make a case for local floods in Scripture. Um, and so there are these, these kind of stories within each of the religions and cultures about these floods, these great floods taking place. Um, I think you can look at Scripture and make a case that it was a global flood. I do think that has some issues with, um, there's a Scripture in, oh man, I wish I had all this stuff off the top of my head. I'm not that good yet. That's why I don't have a personal driver. Um, there's a Scripture in the Psalms. Psalm, oh, I can't remember. I'll find it. Um, but it talks about how before creation, water covered the entire face of the planet. And then when God made the dry land appear, it said in the Psalms that, that never again would water cover the whole face of the planet. Well, if you hold to a global flood theory that water a second time covered the face of the planet, it seems to contradict with that text in Psalms. Now, uh, someone who holds to global th flood theory will have a way of explaining that. Um, but so there seems to be some issues with it as well, also some good points. Um, but, and the same is true, I think, for local flood theory. Um, I think that some scripture points to a local flood. And, and even when you just think of the purpose of the flood, what was the purpose of the flood? To wipe out mankind, right? If mankind was localized in one area, we don't need water to cover the entire face of the globe. And we only need water because the purpose is not to wipe out all animals as well. And to cover the whole globe is just to wipe out humankind. And so if humankind is centralized in one kind of location, a local flood would do that purpose. Um, and then that would maybe help explain uh, how did all the animals get from all over the parts of the earth to the ark? And why don't we see kind of fossil evidence of animals dying in all these different parts? Well, one possible explanation would be if it's a local flood, then the you know, animals that existed over in, in, in uh, uh, Australia never had to leave because that part didn't get flooded. So that's one possible explanation, I think. Um, and so you, you can really look into that. You can look at the vocabulary used. A lot of times the vocabulary says, you know, when it, people came from all over the earth. Well, not literally all over the earth, kind of the known earth. And so you kind of look at some of that language. And I at least think it allows for the possibility of it being a local flood. So my mind, I haven't made up my mind on what my thought is on it. Um, but I think that they are both possible Christian explanations, that whether it goes towards a local flood or a global flood, I think they both can make sense and be, can be reconciled with Scripture. So kind of like the dinosaur thing of, yeah, maybe these two different things, but both doesn't have a problem with me if science shows one or the other.